The words of Jesus Christ are the words of eternal life. And we will be judged by those words. Many believers look for an opportunity to sin. And therefore, they twist the scriptures. They select certain scriptures to justify their sinfulness. Jesus commanded us to live in utter holiness and obedience to Him. The apostles, Peter, Paul, John, and the others also preached the same message. They preached Jesus Christ. But some people twist the scriptures to their own detriment. I want to read the words of Peter in this regard. I read from Second Peter chapter 3 verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, in which the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat, and the earth and its works will be burned up. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Looking for the hastening and the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning, and the elements will melt with intense heat. But according to His promise, we are looking for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Peter emphasizes here, what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness because God will purge the earth of all unrighteousness and He's creating a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness will dwell and only the righteous will dwell in there. Peter writes further verse 14 Therefore beloved since you look for these things, be diligent to be found in Him in peace, spotless and blameless. I repeat, spotless and blameless. And regard the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as also our beloved brother Paul, according to his wisdom given him, wrote to you, or as also in all his letters, speaking in them of these things, in which some things hard to understand, which the untaught and unstable distort, as they do also the rest of these scriptures, to their own destruction. You therefore, beloved, Knowing this beforehand, be on your guard, so that you are not carried away by the error of unprincipled men, and fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory now and to the day of eternity. Amen. The gospel that is preached in many churches today causes people to fall into sin, to live in unholiness and immorality because they believe that it is acceptable to be sinful. Whereas Jesus Christ says that those who sin are slaves to sin. We must be holy and utterly righteous, or else we will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. These people also twist the words of Paul, and pull out, they highlight certain scriptures, by which they justify sin. But they neglect to read all of the writings of Paul, and to seriously seek the truth, or else they will find the truth, also in the words of Paul, 
These people twist the truth and many run after them and they will be destroyed with them. I now read from Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Paul wrote, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There cannot be any condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because they live in His will. They obey Him. Verse 2, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did, sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh as an offering for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, so that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. If we are led by the Holy Spirit, and not by our flesh, then we will not sin, but we will comply with the law. We will do what the Spirit guides us to do. We will live in utter righteousness and holiness. And that is why the requirement of the law will be fulfilled in us. Because we are led by the Spirit of God and we do righteousness. Verse 5. For those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who are according to the Spirit the things of the Spirit. If your mind is on sin, on the television, on the things of this world, on the things that you lust after, then you will sin. You will do what is wrong. But if your mind is on Jesus and on the things of the Spirit of God, you will not sin. You will live in holiness and righteousness. You will be led by the Spirit. It all depends on where your mind is. Is your mind on Jesus Christ and on obeying Him? Or do you occupy yourselves with TV, video games, the newest technology, celebrities, movies, the things of this world? Where's your mind? Where your mind is, there your body will go. If your mind is on sin and lust and pornography, that is what you'll do. But if your mind is on Christ, you won't do those things. You will do what is pleasing to Jesus. Verse 6. For the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the spirit is life and peace. Because the mind set on the flesh is hostile toward God. For it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so, and those who are of the flesh cannot please God. That is why people cannot stop sinning, because their mind is set on the flesh. They are carried after their lusts, and they do wickedness. They do what is in their mind. Verse 9, however, you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. Why do so many believers run after sin? Because they do not have the Holy Spirit. Their mind is not on Christ. Verse 10, if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit that who dwells in you. So then, brethren, we are under obligation, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, 
For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if by the Spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Is that not clear? That we have to live in holiness and righteousness and that we will do so if indeed we are led by the Spirit of God. We will not live according to the flesh, the desires of the flesh, but we will follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit and do what is pleasing to God. Therefore we will live for Jesus and do His will, do His works, do that which He guides us to do. Our body will not be used for the dead works of the flesh. We will be dead to sin and alive to Christ. Verse 14, For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. If you are not led by the Spirit of God, then you are not manifesting, you are not showing yourself as a son of God, as a child of God. If you sin, you are a child of the devil. You show by your deeds who your father is. You show by your deeds whom you are following. If you are following Jesus, you will do His works. You will obey Him. But if you sin, you are a son of the devil and you are following your father. Verse 15, For you have not received the spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption as sons, by which you cry out, Abba, Father. We have not received a spirit of slavery, we have received a spirit of freedom, a spirit of God. If we sin, we are slaves to sin. If we are born again, we are free from the power of sin and we can cry out to our Father, Abba Father, and He will guide us. He will keep us from the power of the evil one if we want to. But if we turn to sin, we do it by our own free will. God gives us the power to overcome the powers of evil and of sin, because He's our Father. We can cry out, Abba Father, and He will help us. Verse 16, The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, heirs also, heirs of God, and fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with Him, so that we may also be glorified with Him. If we are children of God, we have the approval and we have the confirmation of the Holy Spirit in our heart that He is pleased with us, that we are children of God. But if we do not have that confirmation, that peace that passes all understanding because we know we are doing the will of God, if we don't have that, then we are not in the will of God. We are not led by the Spirit of God. There is no room for sin and unrighteousness in the kingdom of God. Many twist the scriptures to their own detriment and then they do the works of unrighteousness for which they will perish. Obey Jesus Christ. Be righteous and be holy and ask Him to give you understanding of the scriptures, which he will if you ask him. Do not listen to these unprincipled preachers who take advantage of simple people and deceive them for their own personal gain. I want you to come to their church and listen to their folk, their immorality. Do not fellowship with unprincipled men who live in immorality, whose churches are full of sinners, people who confess to be sinners. Be righteous, be holy, obey Jesus Christ, even if you walk alone. Follow Jesus Christ, listen to the Holy Spirit, and He will guide you 
into utter righteousness and holiness. And you will receive confirmation from the Holy Spirit that Jesus is pleased with you. Be led by the Spirit of God and not by the deception of man who twist the scriptures. May Jesus bless you.